along came Max Planck. In the final years of the 19th century, Planck was experimenting with blackbody radiation. All blackbodies, which are objects that perfectly emit and absorb electromagnetic radiation, release energy in the form of heat and light. Actually, most of the energy released by a blackbody takes the form of heat, and it was Planck's hope that by understanding the fundamental relationship between the intensities and the frequencies of the light that blackbodies emit, he would be able to develop a more efficient light bulb, one that maximized light output and minimized heat output. But there was a problem. The classical theory predicted that as higher frequencies of the emitted electromagnetic waves are considered, their intensities approach infinity, and the universe should be burning in an inconceivable blaze of blackbody radiation. This evidently wasn't happening, so obviously there was a problem. A problem that came to be known as the ultraviolet catastrophe. Though it was not Planck's mission to tackle this problem, he did end up resolving it by introducing an assumption that at the time seemed outrageous. In a private correspondence with his friend, Planck referred to the implementation of his assumption as an act of despair, and that he was willing to forego all of his previous conceptions about physics if it meant arriving at a correct solution. The assumption that Max Planck made was that energy, rather than coming in a continuous mesh of smooth values, came in discrete granular packets, which came to be known as quanta. Formally, the assumption that he made can be expressed with this equation. E equals NHF, energy equals some integer, times some constant that would later come to be named after Planck, times the frequency of one of the standing electromagnetic waves inside of the black body cavity. A standing wave is what you get when two waves traveling in opposite directions interfere with one another and form a single wave whose peaks appear to move up and down. So what Planck specifically ended up assuming was that the energy spectrum of standing waves within a blackbody cavity was not continuous, as the classical way of thinking posited. Rather, there were specific values that the energies could take, and that any other values, including values between the allowed ones, were impossible. Put simply, here's what happened. Classical physics tells us that energy is like a ramp. To get from one end of the slope to the other, you can step on pretty much any part of the ramp. There are an infinite number of places you could occupy between the top and the bottom, and these points are all separated by infinitely small distances. What Planck assumed was that energy is like a staircase. You can stand here, 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 and here, but you cannot stand here or here. And the distance that separates each of these allowed energy levels is scaled by some factor of Planck's constant. The general principle that Planck had assumed, and applied to energy, is called quantization. Once Planck had made his assumption, he was able to derive an equation that accurately modeled the distribution of blackbody radiation intensity as a function of temperature and frequency. He'd at long last found a solution to the problem that he'd labored over, and he eventually got a Nobel Prize for doing so. Planck then proceeded to measure his constant, which would go on to become the most important number in all of quantum physics, and found that it had dimensions of energy times time. Today, the accepted value for Planck's constant in standard international units is about 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, or equivalently, 4.136 times 10 to the negative 15 electron volt seconds. It is an incredibly tiny number, and it appears in almost every equation in quantum mechanics, often with 2 pi in the denominator. This expression is so common, in fact, that a new letter was invented to represent it. h-bar, which denotes Planck's reduced constant. h-bar equals h divided by 2 pi. Because this number is so small, we don't notice the effects of quantization in our everyday lives. When you zoom out and look at the staircase from the perspective of a human being, who regularly deals with ranges of energy considerably larger than the ones dealt with in quantum physics, the staircase looks like a ramp. This is what gives rise to the classical way of thinking. It's a situation akin to looking at a piece of paper and considering it flat, but then placing it under a microscope and seeing that it is anything but. Such is nature, Planck's assumption seems to suggest. But Planck didn't really like that.